I would calculate 5,000 numbers and I would calculate 5,000 more just to be the marketer to calculate a thousand numbers such as mean, median, and mode of tons of surveys a thousand times more. A little proclaimers there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to analyze the data today. We are going to calculate mean, median, and mode. I know you have done this in math class, but we are going to apply it now to marketing. So make sure you get out your notes and you follow the storm philosophy of taking notes. Sit back and enjoy. So today, we're going to look at why we analyze data. We are then going to move on to statistical measurements, mean, median, and mode, and we will explore each of these in detail. So why do we analyze? This is something that we need to do after all the research has been conducted, after we've gathered all of the information and responses from all of our survey respondents. This part is done because we want to identify average responses. We want to identify the most common responses. We want to look at the distribution of the data, and we want to find out if, if there's any correlations or what we know as relationships that exist between any two or more of the elements on the survey. For example, how many males like Coca-Cola or how many females like 7-Up. That's a correlation and the only way we can come up with these conclusions and therefore take necessary action is to analyze the data. So as marketers we need to make sense of the data. Otherwise, all it is is just a bunch of numbers. And yes, we, we like looking at a bunch of numbers, but it really doesn't give us any meaning. And that's what we're trying to do. Make meaning of the numbers, of the data. So we use a variety of mathematical tools. The three most common tools are mean, median, and mode. There is other tools such as standard deviation that many of you will explore in math class, but we're not going to really get into it here. We're going to focus just on mean, median, and mode. So first up, it's mean. Now, I'm not calling you mean. I'm not saying that you are a mean person. I'm saying that the numbers have a mean to them. And this is what we consider when we say average. So, out of a set of numbers, what is the average of those numbers? To figure this out, we have a formula. Mean is the sum of all of the elements, all the numbers, divided by the total number of elements. For example, 3, 5, and 7, let's say these were your survey responses. First, we have to find the sum of them. 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals 15. Yes, I know that is crazy, mind-blowing. The second step, we're going to total the numbers up. There are, yes, three numbers, 3, 5, and 7. So to figure out the mean, we take 15 and divide it by 3. Amazing. Median, on the other hand, is the middle value of the given set of numbers. The median is to conduct this, to figure this out, we have to rewrite all of the numbers and this could take a long time when you have a number of responses such as 200 surveys let's say. Uh, and That's why we have many tools at our disposal and technology really helps us in this case. But if we're going to do something simple, let's look at this example. 4, 5, 7, 2 and 1. The first step, count the numbers. There are 5. Second step is to arrange the numbers in ascending order. 1, 2, 4, 5 and 7 and then we need to just simply choose the middle. So what number is in the middle? Yes, it is 4. Again, mind blown. Median for an odd set of numbers is very simple. right? You take the, the numbers, you arrange them, and you look at the middle. Again, 4 being the median of a set of 5 numbers. What happens though when they're an even set of numbers? Well, you take the two middle numbers, you put them together, and then you find the mean, or the average. So in this case, it would be 4.5. So you might have noticed that there's not much difference between the two, mean and median. So why are we going to look at both of these? Well, I think to best illustrate this, we need to look at the following example. Now imagine I get on a Mississauga Transit bus in the morning. I'm going to conduct a survey. I want to survey the five people who ride the bus, their incomes. I want to find out how much money they make in a given year. If I survey these five people and I get the following sets of data, I will then be able to draw some conclusions from the ridership of this bus. So if I use the data that I gathered from surveying these five responses and I find the mean, I would find that the mean of these riders is $50,000. I've added up all their salaries, I've divided by five, I found out $50,000. If I calculate the median, I also find $50,000 because that's the middle number. I get the same answer. Does this matter? Do I need to do both? The answer is yes. So let's take a look. Now imagine this scenario. I'm riding the bus and then all of a sudden LeBron James gets on. Uh-oh, we have LeBron James on our bus. Now all of a sudden our income distribution goes way up, 
right? Fifty million dollars, then sixty thousand, fifty thousand, forty thousand, and thirty thousand. Something's a bit off here. Let's take a look. The median in this case is still fifty thousand. It's still the middle number, fifty million, right down to thirty thousand. But all of a sudden, the mean is quite different. The mean jumps up to ten million thirty-six thousand. That's because we've added up all of our salaries, our incomes, and we've divided by five. That is not very accurate of that ridership, is it? Four people had incomes of 60000 or less, and only one had $50 million. I can't say that I can draw the same conclusions from these, these riders on this bus um, using mean as I could with median, and that's very important. If I were to make recommendations based on the mean, I would say that we need to make our buses cater to those millionaires out there. Not very smart now, is it, if you're going to cater your public transit buses to millionaires. The only reason why we do this is because one person got on the bus. Whereas if I stick to the median, I'll realize that the $50,000 yearly income is much more accurate of the riders who take public transit. And therefore, my recommendations and service would cater more towards those people, a lot more accurate. Mode is our final tool that we'll use to analyze data. Mode is what we use to find out the most common value of a frequency distribution. So what is the most common response when we conduct our surveys? For example, we get these this set of values, 11, 3, 5, 11, 7, 3, and 11. We need to first arrange these numbers in ascending order, 3, 3, 5, 7, 11, 11, 11. Then we need to look at this distribution. Number 11 occurs three times, number 3 occurs two times, number 5 occurs one time, and so does number 7. Based on this distribution, we can say that the mode is 11. It's the most common response. And therefore, with the most common response, we can make recommendations that caters to that common response. Mode is something that we'll use when we're not asking for numerical values. When we're asking about, let's say, your favorite brand of cola, we would code each of those colas as a number. And that number would be able to give us the most common response. That's quite different from looking at incomes, where it is already a value, a number. So mode is what we use to code text values, and then we will look at the most common response. So when we use mean, median, and mode, it's to help us decipher and interpret raw data. Every survey that we conduct, the responses are what we use to make decisions. Now some of those responses are already numerical values and therefore mean, median, and mode is very easy. Other responses have to be coded. So Coca-Cola, let's say we get the code 1. Pepsi would get the code 2. And so on and so forth. And so when we code text, we can then use those numbers to find mean, median, or mode. And that's what we can use to make decisions. Okay. What we want to look at though is using these tools in various circumstances. And we'll use mean, median, and mode in different circumstances, in the circumstances that make the most sense, and that's very important. So in what scenario would you use mean, median, or mode? Think about this now. Think about all your different survey questions that you've looked at. When would you use each? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this presentation. Make sure you get your notes in order. Make sure you have followed your storm philosophy and therefore summarized your notes. You've created a discussion question. Um, and that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow.